What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheetshaber, and we are back. We've got NBA. We're going to be back in business. I'm really excited about this. i um, been looking forward to the NBA season for a while. Did my own uh, my own personal, which I, I do a family, uh, fa- fa- you know, year-long draft last night, so I'm pretty caught up on most things. Of course, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a guessing game early in the season, how people use their players. I think there's certain things that we know to take into it coming from the season, but like it's going to be a very interesting year because teams like Golden State and Boston, who are both playing tonight, um, I don't expect you to see them overusing anybody. I don't expect any team to really overuse anybody early in the season, except for maybe one or, you know, a spot here or there. Um, but in terms of, you know, Sheets and I, we, we were talking pre-show about content. So every day we'll have our regular videos for for basketball. I'll be live every day for basketball um, for every slate. Every now and then there's going to be a time where I'm not going to be able to make it for one, but we'll get somebody to cover and uh, and go through the slate for you. And I'll at least post all my thoughts in our Discord and on our site. I will pl- I'll every day be putting up my uh, my early builds. Uh, my favorite five plays of the day, my core plays on 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 Saber Sim through if you if you have a uh, Saber Sim through True DFS, and uh, that's sort of the main the main stuff we're going to be structured on. If there's anything else that you guys want to see or want to hear about more, let me know, and I can always add more to uh, to some of the content that we're offering. But I'm trying to give you guys an idea of exactly what I'm doing every day, what my thoughts are behind it, and uh, along with the videos, what we, what we do. So. Let me just go backwards a minute. So for those of you that are watching this like for free, you know, on, on the YouTube channel, I mean, every day, well, hopefully like every day we'll put kind of a free YouTube video up where we talk about our early our early look at the slate and things like that. And for the, any of you who've been playing NBA knows um, the 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 relevance of the early pre, you know, preview is is much less for NBA than it is for a lot of sports because so much happens in that last hour before lock and remember it's not like football where if one guy one you know backup tight end gets ruled out you know like the whole slate changes in the nba literally if one guy gets ruled out the entire slate you know turns on its head so we're, we're going to attempt to go to go live pretty much every night where there's probably you know more than two games one or two games or whatever but um we, we're also sensitive to the fact that i mean you guys might be looking at other sites for this live before lock stuff too which Quite honestly, I, I like doing also, you know, to get yeah. to get other to get other stuff. So, as Bobby was saying, we're going to play it by ear with respect to how, like, what time we go on. You know, we want to go as late as possible, mm-hmm. right, to get the latest news. But yet, we also want to go earlier too. Um, first of all, I want to get my own lineups in yeah. afterwards. So we'll have to we'll have to figure that. Out. I, I guess for now, I guess an hour before lock. I guess. Makes I some think, sense. I think an hour before lock is, is probably what we're going to is what we're going to start with um, <clears throat> sometimes. And this is the thing is that as much as we might have a, a good take on it, if you, you know, the, 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 the what, what they do on Roto Grinders, they do a really good job. And they've also got a team of producers behind the scenes looking at every updated piece of right. information. When, when just you and I are on, it can be a little bit more difficult. But what we can do is comment on whatever's happening with that in Discord. And that I always have, have tried to do. With the late breaking NBA news, that's what we did last well, year more of. Is, now, now let me let me ask you. I, I presume again, I don't know this. I presume that the at least the later of the injury reports, what's it, an hour and a half maybe before? Yeah, but there's like so many scratches. I don't even. No, no, no. no I know that, but but yeah. at least you know most of it's there. So I think if we go an hour before. Yeah. I guess that 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 that's good enough. And with respect, I'll just answer everybody kind of for now. Remember, if, if you're actually a member of the site, you have access to several different different things. You know, one are these the NBA projections, which are essentially a combination of the industry aggregate um, plus me having weighted it based on you know my research on who's who be, who's who's better at better at it than other people, um, and I come up with uh, kind of a good little good little uh, projection system which includes value scores and ownership and stuff like that, and this gets put right on here as many times as I update it. Um, we'll get back to this in a second. And then also if you're a Saber Sim uh, subscriber, which is more, which is a little, which is a little more, more money, but it gets you access to Saber Sim as optimizer uh, as well, is whatever goes into my aggregate projections will also get funneled into the Saber Sim uh, template. So you can be able to choose between um, Saber Sim's projections, my projections, the average and things like that. Now, as I mentioned, NBA projections are very, uh, they're very good, but they're very fragile. In other words, if one, if one thing that's ruled out, everything changes. 
And unfortunately, I don't, it's, this is not automated. I don't have an algorithm that does this on purpose for me. You know, it takes, it takes a little while to update this stuff. So I, I can't promise that there's going to be like, like multiple updates during the day. What I'm going to attempt to do, and this is really the best I'm going to do, is I'll put one set out sometime before three o'clock in the afternoon, which is again, early, early, right? right? And then I will attempt to put one, one projection run in just before we go live. Okay, which is, will give us, it's like an hour before. Now, again, a lot of stuff can happen in the meanwhile, and just to manage expectations, I just don't know if I'm going to have the time and, and to, to just update everything again, if something comes out 15 minutes before before post time, you know what I mean? So just, just uh, listen, I'll try, but it takes, it takes longer than you think. Um, right. And so just, you know, just, you know, be, 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 be nice. You know? um, and if you do really are of that type that really just wants everything updated and updated, you know, buy the sub the the Saber Sim uh, package because those do update like all the time. You know, right. um, or pretty they're pretty freaking quick. They're, you know they're incredibly mean? quick, and the truth is, no one out there in any part of this industry does this perfectly. You know, yeah. like there's and, always and and, and and the other thing I will say about about late up late late breaking updates and stuff like that is that if something comes out at like six forty five, you know, that a big injury news comes out and it's a seven o'clock post time, one thing I'll promise you. Is that this is what I've looked at? The ownership projections don't change across the industry, and, right. and 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 it's for no other reason than no, just like me, no one's got the time to do it. You know, like everybody is so scrambling to get their actual projections up, which is you know you can argue what's more important, whatever. But you got to start with your projections before you get to ownership projections. I mean, you think about this: like you got to update your projections and then figure out how those projections impact ownership. Then whatever algorithms they use to scan ownership from across the industry, it's just impossible. So right. what? So so it's just uh, you know it, the NBA. All this is one way of saying that the NBA is tough. You yeah, know? Um, it's tough from a someone who plays it. It's tough from someone who does content. And when when you have me and Ian Bobby. Like we do both, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not like you know the, the guy just playing and he's not doing con not, not not doing anything behind the scenes. It's not just the guy behind the scenes who's not playing. We're doing both, and that's part of the. I hope the charm of you you riding with us is we're actually playing what we're saying we're playing. You mm -hmm. know, like we're we're actually doing what we're doing, and you know when you get you know, the unfortunate reality is you're not going to get me. You know, saying you know what, forget all that. I'm now going to go grind the the projection updates twenty four seven. You know, what I mean, that's just not right. what I'm doing. Um, so that's pretty much what to expect. And, and again, the rest, like as Bobby said, we'll play by ear. Like if you guys thinking, I'll tell you this, if we go live before lock and we only get like a handful of people in there, we just won't do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, so, so, so if you want us to continue doing that, show up, like, subscribe the videos, like do, do whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it takes to let us know that you're in there, you know, and then we'll, uh, we'll do it. And, you know, tell your friends about the site, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but um did I miss anything? I mean, no, no, I think you got it. And I just want to add to everybody that every site, even even still, even with everything you're saying, they're not even going to have everything updated, no. for, for, especially as the season goes on and there's guys who are really genuinely questionable and they're going to see a give it a go pregame. Right. And you could, you could end up like 10 minutes before and then nobody's system is actually going to be able to perfectly guess everything. I mean, the best sites out there last year, you you, you could look at everything out there and you, you'd have guys who were supposed to be 5% owned who were 40% yeah. owned, guys who were supposed to be 40% owned who yeah. were 5% owned. Yeah. So just take it with a grain of salt and remember it's, it's a little bit more intuitive. It's much more helpful if you're playing every day. Yes, I do think that on one thing that all, all of what you're saying sort of leads to the main point is I believe NBA is the most difficult and has the biggest edge of any of the major sports. In well, you're Europe. saying the same thing, right? It, yeah. It, that's why it's got the most edge because it's exactly. the most difficult. Right? Yeah. There, there, there's not a thing where, and, and, and honestly, it's, it's much harder just to randomly throw in a lineup to get lucky. So I, I encourage if you're going to do it to try and take it as seriously as you can. And any questions pop on the discord, say, what do you think of this? And look, not everything's going to be right, but we're going to be giving you exactly what we're doing from, from guys who have done really, really well at this. And uh, we're also doing it in a similar fashion in the sense that we're mostly not max entering everything. We are entering, you know, limited numbers of lineups and still able to compete with those who are max entering everything and, and risking hundreds of thousands a day, which we are not doing. So I think we have a lot to offer. Um, but like every, like Sheets was saying, we have to set expectations realistically because there is so much late breaking news. And like tomorrow, we'll see it even on day one of, of for most teams. There's just going to be a lot of information that, that, that is very subject to change based on, you know, even five Q tags on a, on a 13 game slate or whatever it's going to be. Um, those things could really affect the whole slate. So just, you know, we're, it, remember, I always also like to encourage at the beginning of the year, 
a little bit of bankroll management with NBA where they're still trying to figure out their rotations. We're trying to figure them out. So, uh, you know, usually, usually a first week or two, I tend to hold back a little bit of my, my, my volume of play, but uh, it's, it's tempting when they put up that $5 tournament out there for 250 K for first place, not to want to max enter it. But at the same time, try to practice a little bankroll management early in the season and, uh, you know, bear with that as we go. Um, I'll have my early builds up a little later today. And with all that, I think it's, uh, I think we're ready to get into it, right, Chips? Yeah, I mean, it's so again, we have a two game slate today. We're leading into a 100 game slate, 100 game slate tomorrow. Yep. So, um, again, um, hey, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rough ride, but it's, a, it's, I'll tell you, it's really satisfying when you get, when you get one of these NBA takes right. You know what I mean? Like, if you like think that a guy's going to get a little bit more run than, than people think, or you think a guy's a little bit better than people think, and he comes out there and does it, and it translates to a win, it's particularly satisfying in basketball. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, I don't let's know, do let's just get started. I'm, I, I think I'm sharing my screen already. Yeah, you're up there already. To start with the, uh, you know, Philly and Boston and, and LA and Golden State. And, you know, it's. I think it's smart for me to just kind of show you kind of like what, what I'm looking at here. So yeah. this is kind of like the, like these projections for today. And, you know, I usually don't show this during the thing, but it's the first day. No, that's fine. Yeah. And this is kind of what shows up on the, on the true DFS sites or whatever. And, you know, I rank these by sheets value score. I have ownership projections, the, the minutes, things like that. And I usually, you know, just kind of start by sorting by points, points per dollar to just see like who the good values are and things like that. Um, and it's important to, to, to say again, and then we will get into the slate in a second. We talked about this yesterday, um, that the NBA is, 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 is definitely one of the most projectable uh, sports because it really is just a function of how many minutes you play times your average, basically fantasy points per minute in a way, you know, right. your, your usage and that gets factored in your usage and things like that. So especially in basketball, listen, there's gonna be 130 points scored. So each basket's only worth like, you know, one 65th of the, of the points. So it's not as if, you know, you could get you, your, your whole fantasy days ruined in your first 30 seconds out there, like football, you're like, you got there in football and someone you don't have scores like a, you know, Gabe Davis is a 96 yard touchdown in two seconds. Like you, like you don't have him. The slate's over. You know, it's not like that in the NBA. I mean, it takes a while before you're losing. Let's put it that way. Yeah, um, don't, don't just can't kill you in the first quarter. Exactly. <laughs> so, so the so so the, that's why the projections are pretty are usually usually pretty strong. But as you, as you analyze these slates, remember these are GPPs that we're that we're going to be talking about. And I want you to think about something. You know, like we're we're smart, but there's a lot of people smart, and a lot of people have projection systems, and a lot of them are really, really good. And think about this for a second. Everybody's operating with this very similar projections, and projections are usually pretty solid. How do you think you're going to get an edge? And and the the, the answer is going to be, you know, is is how to leverage ownership on top of that, how to construct lineups, you know, where you're not just playing the top median projections and Part of that is what makes, I don't know, it makes NBA kind of cool. Now, the mm -hmm. two-game slate, it's kind of a shit show. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, all this will be able to come a little bit you know, more more clear when we talk about big 13-game slate. That's when you start to talk about stacking as opposed to not stacking and things like that and more late swap stuff. But let's uh, let's just start talking about some of these plays. You know, listen, yeah. by the way, for those of you who are starting the NBA today, your first time ever playing, I promise you this, it's not going to be like this every night where you could play whoever you want without a, without a salary constraints. Right. Um, guys are really particularly cheap tonight. Uh, but uh, let, why don't we start? I mean, what do you think yeah, of Philly-Boston? Uh, what do you think yeah. of the game? What do you think of your best plays? What do you think? Yeah, I actually think that there is a little bit of edge. And, I, and Oh, I forgot to mention, I'll put up my bets every day, too, for NBA, because I think it's 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 definitely where my strongest my strongest betting uh, sport by any in all, in all facets. But um, this is a pretty typical three and a half at home against Philly. Uh, for what it's worth in season long bets, uh, partially it's to do with the odds. Um, Phillies, I think 14, about 14, 15 to one to win the title. I actually, I actually, this is the first year I can remember thing, saying that I think Philly's got a, a tremendous chance to win the title. And I think that they're really, really good. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to play into to betting to me wanting to bet them necessarily tonight. But if I had to take one side, I would take Philly and I probably would skip the points and just take them at plus 130. Um, if I, if I had to, if I had to pick one way or another to go in this, in this particular matchup. And as far as DFS goes, we're going to have an interesting situation because I feel he is like really their top six guys. I, I, I don't know if there's that many guys that I would like better as a six man top six on a, on a team than, than I like Phillies. I, I love how they fit in together. Some of them. And I, another one's like, like Tyrese Maxey is a guy who's 5k. Like 
And if you compared him to other guys who were 5K at this, if he was on another team, he'd be a guy who would be 10. He, he might be the most expensive guy here. He'd be, he's a guy who could score 30 a game if he if he was on the right team. Um, as it stands, it's kind of all clogged up with them. Um, so it's, it's going to be kind of tricky to figure out how that how that plays out. But as right off the bat, Embiid and Harden are pretty are I think are pretty are, are pretty strong plays any any day at these prices. But everybody's a little too cheap. So I'm trying to weigh it right now. I have Embiid and LeBron as my favorite spend ups and I have Harden as my next favorite spend up. Now, do I think you you can play on this kind of slate Harden and Embiid together? Absolutely. On most big slates, if you're playing like an eight gamer or something, you're just cutting in a little bit too much to each other unless you're like stacking up the other side of the game and and, it, and it's a really up pace matchup. But as of right now, the guys who I'm, I'm heavy, most heavily on are Harden and Embiid in this game on the on the higher side. Um, and then Boston is, is I think Jalen Brown ends up lower owned. I'm, I'm kind of interested in maybe going there. But I think I think Marcus Smart, because of the perception of Brogdon taking over, will be will be lower owned than Brogdon. Uh, not taking over, but taking more of the offensive work. So I sort of like Marcus Smart tonight as a, as 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 maybe my favorite Boston piece as of this moment. But it's it's subject to change. And and what I would be doing in large tournaments to get from this game is I'll have exposure to a bunch of different guys. But I I like the DeAnthony Melton. He he's not gonna. Most nights it's gonna be a uh, oh you know he's not doing anything for us. There's gonna be other nights in 20 minutes where he puts up 35 fantasy points just because of the nature of how he plays. So he's my sort of uh my 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 I guess sneaky ish guy. And um, everybody else is sort of, it's sort of, a, there's, there's nobody I'm like overwhelmingly like I need to play this guy or he's going to be way off the board. It's hard to find guys off the board in this. Maybe Grant Williams at, at low ownership, but I think Anthony Melton is my favorite of the guys of the low owned if I was going to take a shot. And if no one wants to play PJ Tucker and he is in fact starting, which I think he will, I will be happy to, to take a shot on PJ Tucker and hope you get that. Two, he makes two threes and he gets 10 rebounds. That's that's good enough to pay for his salary. Um, so that's sort of a rundown of who, I, who I'm going with. But Embiid and Harden are uh, Embiid, Harden and Maxi are I don't think I'll have a lineup without one of them. And I definitely will have two of them in a good portion of my lineups. So what's interesting is that with all the with all of this, even on a two game slate, um, Bobby didn't even talk about who probably is going to be the most popular of the whole the whole group. Um, and that's going to be probably Al Horford. Um, right. So you what, what for those of you who don't know, I mean you have um Robert Williams is gonna be out for for uh for Boston. And this is this was a kind of a thing all last year. Like you you'd watch to see if Robert Williams was out or if Al Horford was out um to play to play the other one. And it, it helps what well, helps, it helps that that Horford is both power forward and center eligible. So you could play him with Embiid rather easily um so he at least from a projection perspective you know looks to be you know pretty pretty solid and he's going to be owned as 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 a result of that um the other guy that you you touched on that at least from a points per dollar perspective you know rates to be really strong is, is Tyrese Maxey um and look this is going to be also something that we talk about a lot when I say who the you know who rates to be the top point per dollar plays and then I say the rates to be pretty high owned. That's going to be the case almost every day. You know what I mean? Like the, right. the top point per dollar projected plays are always going to be high owned. That's just that's just the bottom line. Um, uh, so and, and as far as this game goes, I mean, just other guys. I mean, you mentioned Marcus Smart, uh, Malcolm Brogdon. I don't know if you talked about um, uh, Derek White as much, um, but him at forty one hundred. I have him again, relatively lower owned than the other guys. Um, at least for now, but um, you know, it's a two game slate. No mm -hmm. one's going to be, uh, no one's going to be that low on. Um, but I, I, you know, I've always been a fan of him in general. Mm -hmm. uh, he had some good games last year in Boston. Mm -hmm. Some, some not so great. So, so those two. But, but as far as the spend ups go, um, I don't. Well, I have Embiid rated number one by um, you know, a little, little above a LeBron overall on the slate. Mm -hmm. And then I have, I'm not, I don't have Harden even remotely close to Tatum. Uh, I, I would, I would play Tatum at nine K as opposed to Harden at 89. Um, uh, you know, especially if you're playing Embiid, you know, well, look in, in a two game slate, you can play the two of them together, but just, you know, whatever. I I'm obviously rather my first guy to put in after MB would be Tatum. If I had to choose between one of Tatum or, or Harden. So, so I do like both, both, both B Tatum and Harden. And the, you know, the, the chalky, you know, good point per dollar plays I mentioned, uh, Maxi, uh, Horford and Derek White. 
Now let's let's examine like some of the like some of the hoodoos you talked about. So Grant Williams, um, yeah, I mean, if if who 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 said Horford can play that you know, hundred minutes anymore? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Um, so yeah, so that's that's where I, that's where I'm on this game. Um, yeah, I want to uh, want to touch on one thing because yeah. like you know we're trying to get different, we're trying to find ways, and the only reason I, I just didn't mention Horford because I thought like sometimes I do that. I'll just leave out the most popular obvious right. play, but the problem with, so the, the, the thing about Horford at 4,900 with really, and also by the way, a pretty decent history against Embiid uh, in terms of actual matchups. Um, I, I don't know how he plays enough minutes. And then also I have no idea who they're putting on Embiid when he's not in the game. Are they really going to let Blake Griffin try to guard him? That seems like it's not going to work. Uh, I mean, I doubt Noah Vonle is projected to play zero minutes tonight. They might have to play Noah Vonley some minutes. How, like, because you're, you're, they're not going to put Tatum on him, obviously. They're not going to put Jalen Brown. They can't put Grant Williams is even, Grant Williams is six foot seven. Like, how's he going to guard a guy who's seven three like Embiid? Uh, Blake Griffin is, you know, I, I just don't see how any of these other guys guard him. So what if Horford gets in foul trouble? Right. And so I, I'll, maybe this is just for the, the, you know, one out of 150 or five out of 150, but I will probably throw a Noah Vonley lineup out there just to see, just in case. Yeah. This is the first game of the season. They don't need to yeah. overreach these guys. And Horford picks up two quick fouls. I guess Blake Griffin comes in, but how is he going to match up with Embiid? I just don't know how it works. I really don't see it. They don't have a natural other big. So um, it's going to take some speculative plays like like Blake Griffin, like Noah Vonley. And then Grant Williams is the more logical one. But I I think that's what people think they will do. I, don't just, I just don't know how that matchup works for them. Um, they could also go small, uh, but it's not something that Boston tends to do. They like to play their bigs. They just don't have them right now. Uh, with that, without Robert Williams, it's a very different team. There's an outside chance Luke Cornett could get some minutes. Um, but as of right now, I'll touch more on this in the live show because I, I don't, I do want to think, I do think this is the kind of way you could, you could find a way to get a winning tournament thing. If, if you happen to get it right with the guy they bring in for, for Horford, if Horford gets in foul trouble, which seems like a pretty real possibility, not to mention they probably want to keep Horford below 28 minutes anyway. So you might get 20 minutes out of somebody else M might be worth looking into these guys a little further, which I'll do. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 we, we talked about the main plays in order of priority. I think I have Maxi Horford as the, as the logical ones, the, the most obvious, the Derek White one, I, I'm open to, but I think I would rather play Brogdon at 4,900 than White. And oddly, I'd rather play Smart ahead of Brogdon because I think Brogdon's going to be more owned than Smart. But you're going to be mixing in a lot of players from this game. And the reason we're spending so much time on this, in addition to the fact that it's only two games on the slate, is that I am going to recommend that we probably don't play any Warriors tonight, um, which means we're really down to three teams. And we'll get into that reasoning in just a minute when we talk about that game. Well, well, you know what? Um I wanted to ask you about Montrez Harrell, uh, but 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 before that, um, the other thing I forgot to mention about the NBA in general is that it's uh, it's a late swap sport in in the in the strongest fashion, you know, and 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 more than most sports. I mean, if, if all else being equal, you probably want to backload the later games just to provide some flexibility if you're unsure about what's what's going to happen. Sure. And and also, you know, you, you have an island game like this where they're both island games, right? Yeah. You have one seven thirty and one ten o'clock. I mean, you you could argue that that you can play, you know, more people from the late later game, um, but you just it's so hard to figure out what to swap to, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't go to your way. But before we leave that game, that first game, any interest in Montrez Harrell coming off the bench? Or I think, I think I, so it's funny because I actually like him like I, in our season long thing last night, I think I had him rated a little higher than everybody else did. He's um, he, I, I think he'll have some games, but I, I like him more because I like him for the season long because Embiid's probably going to miss, you know, 15 to 20 games this year. And there's always risk injury. I don't know in a one game thing on the first night of the season, Philadelphia feels like they want to make their mark in this game. I'm not sure how much run he gets, but I think they might even consider throwing him out there in a, a couple times with Embiid, probably later, probably that'll come further down the road. But as of right now, I have him just as a guy. It's hard for me, unless I was playing Horford in that lineup also to get to him because it's hard, it's hard on, it's it's hard for me to, to see like he, him outscoring Horford or just getting anywhere near as much run as Horford does. 
in this one. So that's that's my only issue with Harrell. But if no one's going to play him, I'll, I'll take a shot there. I just don't know how much run we can really expect from him in this game. And, you know, you're going to hear this a lot. It's a lot of speculation early in the season. I, I paid attention to everything that's been happening in the offseason. But when it comes down to one game, it's the first night of the season in Boston coming off of their, you know, playing in the playing in the cha- in the championship. And uh, and they have the rivalry with, with Philly. I think Philly really tries to play their put their best foot forward. If there's one team I feel confident in playing their guys minutes tonight, maybe outside of MB, we'll see it. Maybe they keep him to 30 or 32. But I think Philly plays their plays their top guys more minutes tonight than any of the other teams do, with the potential exception of LeBron. With respect to the Lakers, Golden State, I want to start with uh, with one player because um, it's it's a, it's it's a thought process that that I really go through every time you have a situation like this, and I always you know uh, grill Bobby. I ask Bobby some key questions on this. I want to talk about Kendrick Nunn first um, with uh, with with respect to to Westbrook in some in some form. You know, you you have. You have um, Westbrook was originally questionable. Then they're saying he's probably going to play. Then there's rumors he might come off the bench, things like that. In in any event, you have Kendrick Nunn, who's a it was a flat three K, um, who's projecting right now at least at six X, um, and he's going to be obviously extremely popular. So the questions that I always have in situations like this, where we're not a hundred percent sure what's going to happen with with the other guy, mm-hmm. maybe we are a little more confident now. But but like, do you like him? If Westbrook plays, if you do you like him, if Westbrook doesn't play, do you like him if Westbrook is coming off the bench or doesn't it matter? Would you play Kendrick Nunn? If you want to play Kendrick Nunn, are you rooting for Westbrook to play in full? Because maybe that may mean that he's like lower owned, you know, um, what where, where are you with respect to Kendrick Nunn tonight? We'll start with that. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure that the that, that, that for one thing, I'm pretty sure Westbrook plays um, from everything that I've heard. And I think he will be coming off the bench this season, uh, which which opens up a whole lot of other questions. I am uh, I'm a, I'm probably you know not quite as high on none as everybody else. I'm even looking at projections and minutes and stuff, and people are projecting him to score over a fantasy point per minute, which feels like a lot to yeah. ask for from a guy on this particular squad. Like it doesn't seem like a you know, I don't think anybody but but the top guys should be except for and and, and Westbrook, but the, but Davis and, and LeBron should ever be just counted on for a, at least a point fantasy point per minute. So I, I, I am okay with none. Um, I am more interested in the other guys. He's also coming off of an injury. Hasn't played in a while uh, in a regular season game, but I, I, I'm a little higher on Beverly than I am on none. Uh, I'm a little bit, and I know they're, they're different prices. And I think that Austin Reeves is probably getting overlooked more than he should. And that means like, still, he's going to be 25 or 30%, you know, but he's 3,400. I think I would give the edge to him because I think he'll play more minutes than none. But having said all that, none can get hot. And, and I just don't want to play a guy who's a heat check guy on a team that's not going to be looking for him offensively anyway, um, I, you know, at, at 50% ownership. I'd rather take a shot on the other guys who are maybe, you know, w- almost like what, like 30, 30% owned versus 50% owned. So I would rather play the Reeves-Beverly combination than I would none as of right now. Um, that's where I'm at with, with that play. And I also like Lonnie Walker uh potential like again they're all potential uh the main the main thing i have in this game though is that i just think about the the the, the script and, and i and i think that the, the spread being only seven is kind of kind to the lakers um I, I could see this game the lakers getting in trouble a lot of ways this game and i think lebron he first of all how much history does he have playing at golden state and the history with staff and every and all those games i think that if they get in trouble he's going to try to co- completely take over um, which is why he is my favorite of the spend ups. Now it's not like people aren't going to play him, um, but I have LeBron Embiid and Harden as my three favorite spend ups. And if you can get all those guys in, I think that's a really interesting way to start your build. And I think that uh, he's he's definitely my favorite play on the Lakers, but I'm going to be mixing in the other guys. I, I If I had to say my favorite as of right now, I think it probably is Beverly, um, but Beverly Reeves, then Walker, then none for me, just because of the non ownership. And I don't know that I need the actual flat 3K. I think I might take Austin Reeves' as minutes where, you know, you have a guy who can get hot from the outside also. Um, the Lakers do have other guys who can handle the ball. I think the most interesting play in this game for large field tournaments by far, you're going to get a less than 10% on Russell Westbrook who's going to be playing without LeBron or AD on the court most of the time he's on the court. And he very likely could close as well, depending on how the game is going. His price is too high. All the things don't make sense. But it's really hard to find guys with a ceiling that could, you know, wouldn't be, would it, would it shock any of us if Westbrook scored 50 fantasy points off the bench? I don't think so. Um, so th- there's your guy who who is just 
looks logically like the wrong kind of a play is not going to make any sense to anybody. He's going to be, you know, less than 10% owned on a two game slate. I think Westbrook's your, your, your long shot tournament play here. And uh, as far as Anthony Davis goes, I think he'll be extremely popular. I just prefer the other spend ups a little bit over him coming off the injury. I think they're going to ease him back in more than they will the other guys. And LeBron, as much as they always talk about taking it easy, they, they just, he doesn't, when he plays, he plays 40 minutes. <laughs> That's it. You know, the reason why um, some of these, some guys in the NBA and DFS end up you know, more popular than you might imagine was because of what I mentioned with Al Horford, you know, the, uh, the uh, multi-position eligibility. Uh, I, I specifically refer to, uh, to Austin Reeves in this, in that situation, you know, cause he is not only multi-position eligible, but he's also small forward eligible, yep. which is typically a position, which is weak. So, so he's probably going to be a little higher on than people might think, but that doesn't mean he's a bad play because there's a reason why he's because so you can put him in in that spot. And, you know, Austin Reeves, I mean, listen, we, I, I wish he didn't have this game to, to uh to end the season last year because people see in the game log, but how about that? 76 fantasy points to end the season with the big old triple double and 42 minutes of work and all that stuff. You know, so the do- guy definitely listen, I don't care what you know what it is. I mean, if you if you could do this in an NBA game, you got you got something. You know what I yep. mean? Um, so I think I you know, I hate to like bury the Lakers, right? But but I start looking like LeBron and um, and Westbrook and, and these guys are kind of like, I don't know. I don't want to say on the way out, you know what I mean? But kind of like on the, on the, on the other end of, the, of their peak, I imagine. And then I, 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 I think about golf when like, like is that I want to play the guys that are, you know, are on the way up, I guess, you know, I, and, and I, so I like the Austin Reeves play. I think that he can really pop Kendrick Nunn. I think I kind of agree with you. Um, maybe he's the sucker play tonight. You know what I mean? Cause listen, he's got to, he's got to shoot well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which is one thing. Yep. And the other thing this is what I want to ask you about. You did mention something I want to clarify. So you said, well, um, uh, Westbrook is not going to be on the court with uh, with with Davis and, um, and LeBron, LeBron a decent amount of the time. I forgot what they did last year. Is are they they not going to do that thing where at least one of them is on the court all the time? Um, Davis mm-hmm. and, 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 and LeBron. No, I, I, I just don't think they'd have the ability to. I mean, Anthony All Davis, right. you got to treat with kid gloves, especially early in the season. Uh, yeah. And it's and it's a shame because the Lakers really want to get off to a fast start because this is, I mean, this this team has been talked about like nonstop about how horrible they are and how horrible decision making. How could you waste LeBron? All these things. I think they really want to come out and play their best. So I don't know where that fits in with AD. I just have him a little bit below the other guys when I, when thinking about tonight. But you're going to want to play at least one of probably two of Beverly Nunn, Reeves, um, and Lonnie Walker, just because the value is there. And two of those guys are going to to, to more than get there. Um, you're going to build your teams tonight, in my opinion, around Philly and L.A. Um, they just make the most sense. And the reason so is, as as you mentioned, you know, uh, Sheets, Sheets, we and I were joking yesterday. Hey, there's nobody there's nobody going to play more than 28 minutes for the for the Warriors. That seems what well, come on, they're supposed to be ready for this. I actually think that they don't, they, they're just going to coast. I, I really think through the, and they're going to win a lot of games coasting, um, but they don't need to play these guys a ton of minutes. Uh, why, why would they? they they're, they've, they've been the most overextended team, you know, what, five of the last seven years they've had to play in, into game six of at least of the NBA finals. They're playing, you know, 20 more games than everybody else. And they've got, they've had injuries on top of it. Well, if I'm well, them, I'm probably just, Okay, let's let's take it a little bit easy. The one guy on their team who I who is going to be popular, who I do like, is Draymond. But again, we've seen Draymond fail a million times. We don't need to play him at crazy high ownership. He might be the highest owned player on the slate for crying out loud. Like I mean, and and uh, he's he's the one who makes the most logical sense. I do think that there's room for speculation here. The guy who the guy who will not get any ownership, Jonathan Kaminga, I think is completely in play as an off the board guy. Um, Jordan Poole's price is too high, so people won't play him. I kind of think that's that's a little bit interesting. Well, they won't. They'll play him a little bit, um, but I, I mostly want, don't want to play these guys. The, the only thing I forgot to add from this game that I think is important—it's on the Lakers side—is without Bryant playing, they're probably going to start Davis at the five. But if they don't, just remember, like if you if you want to have, make sure you have your utility spot open because. Damian Jones may end up starting and when he plays, he actually can play minutes. He's also going against his former team, which not that that means anything, but he's had big games against them before. Like 
if the, if they, for some reason, the Lakers end up starting Damian Jones at 3,500, he would surpass all these other guys in terms of value from, in my opinion, um, cause the Lakers just haven't shown the consistency of letting AD play the five. He doesn't like to, um, most likely they'd let him do it tonight, but I don't know. I, I think there's an outside chance that you might end up getting a, a Damian Jones start or a Damian Jones, at least being on the court for some minutes, even though you don't need a big against golden state. That's the one thing I keep going back to. Um, the one other guy to speculate on for golden state is James Wiseman. It's probably too high of a price to get there right now, but I think James Wiseman is their starting center within the next I don't know, maybe, maybe a couple months into the season, but he is, uh, he's going to put up some, some monster, monster games. He's a little too pricey for me tonight, but uh, just be ready. It, it, it's going to be Wiseman season later in this, later this year. There's, there, there's a lot of people out there that are really, really high on his, on him. And just because he's been hurt and been out for a couple of years, doesn't mean that he doesn't still have the number one talent that they drafted him with. And they are very high on him overall. I know that. So other than that, it feels like just throwing darts on the Golden State side for me. Um, well, I think well, I think it's important because because you know one way to read the the news that nobody none of the starters are going to start you know are going to play more than thirty minutes is that means that guys off the bench are going to play, play more than they usually play. You know, right? Um, so I think that on a two game slate specifically, I think the sort of that, I think that's kind of the key is is to figure out which which of the guys off the bench not figure out but you know make a reasonable speculation of which of the guys off the bench have 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 up have upside you know um and i, I really like the uh the kuminga thing mm -hmm. uh, but who else who else is in this group here? they're loaded their bench is left only problem they, they they literally have a 12 like they're they have 12 guys they 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 could legitimately and probably will I mean, play at least I mean, they could play the vincenzo to get him some run but he's not the guy that's gonna like you know he's not gonna smash you know no um, no i think no if, there, if, if there's a, the other speculative play is is moody um yeah that's the guy i was thinking it, about and 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 it, he's gonna look like he's barely gonna play minutes to start the season all that stuff but there will be some time where he's going to get hot. The only problem is you look at their lineup. It's like, how many minutes can he really play when, because even though these guys may not play more than 28, I do expect them all to be around 28, you know, uh, outside of maybe Looney who get, who, who, who could go more and he could go less. He's the only one I see with upside on the 28 minutes, but I actually see him as the most likely to possibly play only 14. Um, so I, I like the, the Kaminga and the Moody for the large field stuff, especially. I would, I would, I would be overweight those guys because they're not going to be owned and there's definitely a path for them. The problem is there's just so many bodies to feed and Poole's going to get minutes. Wiseman's going to get minutes. Steven Chenzo's going to get minutes. Kaminga, Mike, Michael Green will get minutes. Moses Moody will get, I mean, there's just, there's 11 guys who I think are going to get actual, you know, double yeah. digit minutes for their team. It just makes it really hard to play them. Um, and, and, and I'm looking at their ownership and, and, and they're not, their ownership isn't necessarily treating them that way. Kaminga is the one guy who looks like he's going to be crazy low owned, and because of the price, no one's going to play Steph. And you can always just take that. Maybe that. Maybe that's what you do. Maybe on a two game slate, even though I don't like it in a, in a vacuum. Take the raw. Take the raw thirty points or whatever, and be. A... Yeah, or or or, or, or just, just 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 take Curry and hope that he outscores the other guys because he gets hot. Like that's that's right. completely logical to me. Um, I have no issue with it, but I I don't think this is the spot where that's going to happen. But. I mean, look, there, you never know with him. It, it, really, it really doesn't matter. Matchup situation, whatever. He just can get hot and put up 60 fantasy points in 28 minutes. And uh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, especially against a Laker team that I, I'm very, I have a lot of questions about their defense. So, so that's where I'm at. I've got, so the priorities for, for logical, for, for, you know, cash-ish type of plays, uh, Horford, LeBron, Embiid, Harden, Draymond, um, the guys you want to mix in uh, that, that are going to be a little bit lower owned of the value would be Reeves, and Beverly, a little bit lower on us, or Reeves, Beverly Walker. Kendrick Nunn will be a little more popular, but he's another one you could use, obviously, going in. Tyrese Maxey's my other favorite. And then I'm deciding what I want to do with the Brogdon, Der Brogdon or Derek White situation. But that's sort of your value and how you're building. It's just uh, it's just going to be hard to try to get way off the board with your lineups today. And one thing you can do because the pricing is you can leave uh, more than usual. I wouldn't leave more than, a, I wouldn't leave like a thousand on the table. I think you could leave like five or 600 just to differentiate your builds a little bit. And I think that's actually okay tonight. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we're, we're ready to, we're ready to go. Yeah. And, and, and again, well, as, as, as we always say, we'll, we'll have more for you guys at, at, uh, at three 30. I'll, I'll be live at three 30, six, six Eastern. Um, and ready to, uh, as sheets would say, rock the house. So what are we going to see? Six 30. That's what we do. Yeah. Seven an hour, an hour before tonight's tonight starts seven 30. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck, everybody. Let's have a great season. I'm really pumped about it. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's make some money.